Tonight at 6, we hear from the mother of the victim in Saturday night's deadly shooting in Madison, how she wants her son remembered. And calls for solidarity from Madison's religious community, how the local Jewish community is responding to a mass shooting in Pittsburgh. This is News 3 at 6. Thanks for joining us tonight. A Madison woman is in custody for the death of 21-year-old Stephen Villegas, who was shot and killed in a downtown parking ramp in the early hours of Sunday morning. 21-year-old Kenyara I.S. Gadsen is facing a tentative first-degree intentional homicide charge after Madison police say detectives reviewed surveillance images and spoke with witnesses. Our Madeline O'Neill sat down with the victim's family members who are sharing a message tonight. Maddie? Eric and Charlotte, Stephen Villegas' mother tells me she's happy an arrest was made, but of course, she's sad her son is gone. Tonight, she has a plea for Madison. I tell you, a mother's pain, nothing can take it away. A mother's pain. My boy was very loving. Felt deepest with the loss of a child. For any mother that had to suffer through this, I just wish I was awed or bewitched. Snap my fingers and everything can be normal. 21-year-old Stephen Villegas was shot and killed early Sunday in a parking ramp downtown. Senselessly taken from us. But as his mother, Rashawn Villegas, is still fighting for him. I'm never going to say goodbye. I'm just going to say I miss you. Because Stephen wasn't just a son. You took away a father. You took away a brother, a son, a cousin. You took away joy, our joy. Why? He was the love of my life. Stephen's fiance, Arissa Wilborn, is feeling another sort of mother's pain. He cared about his family. The loss of her children's father. He loved his kids. Stephen's kids are a nearly three year old son, Jave, oh. and a two week old daughter, Maeve. Oh, I tell you, this little girl is Steve, a girl all over. They won't have their father there. So these two mothers are left asking why. It's just painful. I don't know of anybody that would want to harm Stephen. He wasn't a troubled person, a troublemaker. He would always try to bring peace. Rashawn says Stephen went to Freak Fest Saturday night and got mixed up with the wrong crowd. Just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I just pray for justice. Even justice can't take away a mother's pain. I just won't see my baby anymore. But this family has a plea, so others are spared the heartache. And this gun violence, it just has to stop. Madison police believe the suspect and Villegas had met at some point before the ramp encounter, even if it was briefly that night. The family is planning to set up a GoFundMe page, and it also looks like a candlelit vigil is planned at 7 tonight outside the ramp where Villegas was shot. Oh, very sad story. Our hearts go out to the Maddie O'Neill in our news center. Maddie, thank you. A Madison man has pled guilty to three charges in connection with a crash this spring that killed a man and severely injured his wife. 20-year-old Benjamin Cortez pled guilty to second-degree reckless homicide, first-degree recklessly endangering safety, and first offense operating while intoxicated. According to the criminal complaint, Cortez was driving more than 100 miles an hour down Midvale Boulevard when he lost control of his car and crashed into a couple walking their dog on the sidewalk. Cortez is scheduled to be sentenced early next year. And we turn now to weather. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti and your first alert weather. Gary? Herc, it's been a pretty nice day today. We started out with some clouds, had some sunshine. Now we're seeing a few scattered light showers, mainly north of Madison. You can see this on weather tracks, actually with a little surge of warmer air aloft that's moving eastward across the southern part of the state. You can see some light showers possible for about the next hour or so north of Madison. Otherwise, low temperatures this morning started out around 40 degrees thanks to the cloud cover here in Madison. A few locations were in the mid to upper 30s. High temperatures today were right around 50 here in Madison, just a little above 50 to the north and east where there was a little more cloud cover. Temperatures stayed in the upper 40s. Current temperatures range from the middle 40s up toward the Fox Valley to still around 50 degrees over southwestern Wisconsin. By tomorrow morning, we'll be down to the uh, lower 40s. Look for skies to be mostly cloudy during the day tomorrow. There's a chance for a shower mainly south and east of Madison in the afternoon with a high of 55. That's your first alert forecast. Gary, thank you. Madison's Jewish community is reacting to the shooting at a Pittsburgh synagogue with sad sadness and disgust. For some, it serves as a reminder of what their relatives or they themselves went through during the Holocaust. Rose Schmidt sat down with the Madison rabbi today and is here to explain. Well, the Jewish community in the Madison area is made up of three synagogues, a total 
total of about 4,500 people. A local rabbi tells me there are some members here who grew up in Pittsburgh, and some even have ties to the synagogue where 11 people were killed. But even members without personal connections still feel violated after what happened this week. As the reality of the tragedy in Pittsburgh set in, My first reaction was one of revulsion and shock. It became more clear that the impacts are widespread. Even though it happened in Pittsburgh, it really affects every Jew. It really affects every American. Rabbi Jonathan Beitch called Madison's Jewish community vibrant. But tragedies like this strip just a little bit of that color. This is something that directly affects who we are. It affects what we do. It affects people who might have lived through the Holocaust in our community. Survivors of that terrible time are harder to come by these days. It was a, a, such a, a strange, sickening odor of, of, of burning flesh. We did not know what that is at that time. But histories of 22 survivors tied to Wisconsin are chronicled as interviews at the Wisconsin State Historical Society. No food, no water. Meaning they won't soon be forgotten. In more recent events... Suspects talking about... Uh, all these Jews need to die. Remind faith communities the importance of helping each other through another terrible time. Being anxious about this kind of thing is normal. In hopes of bringing back some of that vibrancy. Rabbi Beich says the community support at a vigil last night was tremendous. Tonight at 7 o'clock there is another vigil on the steps of the Memorial Library hosted by Hillel at UW-Madison and other organizations. And organizers expect more than 500 students to be there. All right, Rose Schmidt reporting tonight. Rose, thank you. Thank you, Rose. When we come back, an area middle school is closed to 7th and 8th graders again tomorrow for mold in some classrooms. Well, school officials are working to get rid of it and get back to school. That's more ahead on News 3 at 6. Seventh and eighth graders in DeForest stayed home today after mold was found in one side of the DeForest Area Middle School. The district doesn't have a set plan yet on how to get rid of the mold or where to teach seventh and eighth graders as, as it's being removed. Amanda Quintana in studio now with more details. Amanda? 
Yes, well, school was canceled for 7th and 8th graders today. It's also canceled tomorrow. The superintendent tells me it's unlikely they will be back on Wednesday either. The mold was originally found behind baseboards and wallpaper on Thursday. Then more was found on Friday. Since 5th and 6th graders are technically in an adjacent building and the air systems are not connected, they're able to go to class as normal. Today's investigation found that the mold is dried out and dormant, so it's not releasing chemicals into the air right now. Because it's in hidden spaces, it's, it's undisturbed, it, it doesn't necessarily pose an immediate risk, um, but we're being extra cautious so that we can come up with a good remediation plan to ensure student safety. Superintendent Eric Renez says it could have been there for years, so we don't know when it was growing and releasing toxins into the air, possibly affecting those with asthma and allergies. Once they start moving it to remove it, the mold will release those toxins again. The district is looking at changing around the 7th and 8th grade schedule or sending the students to another campus, but no decisions have been made yet on that. They hope to let parents know by tomorrow night. We've seen this before in schools. Mm -hmm. Always a challenge to get it cleaned up. Amanda, thank you. And next up on News 3 at 6, a local woman speaking out tonight in honor of Stroke Awareness Week. Why she wishes she would have known the signs before it happened. Stay with us. And skies will be mostly cloudy tomorrow. There is the possibility for a shower late in the afternoon, mainly south and east of Madison, but Halloween looks to be nice. I'll take a look at our forecast in just a few minutes. How well do you know the signs and symptoms of a stroke? One woman wasn't sure. Rather than calling 911, she Googled the symptoms. She did end up getting to the hospital in time to treat those symptoms. Now that she's lived to tell the tale, she has a strong message for everyone. Jamie Perez shares her story for World Stroke Awareness Day. When the hands of a clock seem to push the boundaries of life, time can sometimes be the longest distance between two places. For Jennifer Gardner, one of those places started here. It was on September 28th. On September 28th, Jennifer could have taken her last breath here on Bascom Hill. Then I started drooling. Then I spoke out loud and I couldn't understand myself. She was having a stroke and didn't know it. Google, what's the symptoms of a stroke? A coworker saw her and took her inside a building nearby, unsure of what was wrong. 
Another coworker was the one who knew that time was of the essence. You could tell that her, her face was droopy and she didn't speak clearly. And I knew right away she was having a stroke. Jennifer was quickly taken to the hospital. Just minutes had passed, but for her, time just seemed to stop. I was afraid I was gonna die. But just like that, time was on her side. Within three hours, I had had the symptoms, got into the hospital, had the TPA, had the surgery, and when I came out of recovery, I could talk. She can now talk about her story of being a stroke survivor. No, there was no indication that I would ever have a stroke. Just 47 years old and in good health, she would have never thought this could happen to her. 730 hours later, she's alive to thank the people that made it happen. My fast-acting co-workers, that if they wouldn't have done that, you know, um, and they could have ignored me. Yeah, not on Kelly's watch. <laughs> Well, I don't know what I'd do without her. She's my partner in crime at work, and I'm just so happy that everything went as, you know, as expected, and I'm excited to have her back with me at work. Doctors treat patients who have strokes on a regular basis, but in Jennifer's case, everyone was in the right place at the right time and with the right knowledge. I was really just grateful that, that her coworkers recognized what was happening and having other people in the community recognize the symptoms of stroke, even if they're not happening to them. Recognizing the symptoms of a stroke is what helped save Jennifer's life, even when she didn't want to believe it was happening. I was embarrassed. I was scared. I was really, really scared and didn't want to believe that that's what was happening. She said she didn't call 911 because of those very reasons. I didn't want to bother anybody. You're never bothering us. That's what we're here for. In an emergency where time is everything, the golden rule is the sooner the better. Uh, closer to what we call the golden hour, which is that first 60 minutes. Maybe we can call her the golden survivor for someone who believes this happened for a reason. I had a wonderful outcome and maybe it was a part where I'm supposed to tell people this. I don't know. When the hands of a clock seem to push the boundaries of life. They can't hold off and the timing is everything. If you don't feel right, you need to call and you need to get in because I'm a prime example that if you do, it's a good outcome. It's, a, it's an awesome. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore the, don't ignore the symptoms. Don't. In Madison, Jamie Perez, WISC News 3. Lucky to be alive and happy to tell her story. More details on knowing the signs of a stroke can be found on our website at channel3000.com. There are people helping people in Sauk County. Farmers are banding together to help out with the harvest as one farm stands empty after an accident. Mike Lindloff of Sauk Prairie was the sixth generation farmer on the original Hatz farm. That's been in his family since 1844. He was also a proud FFA alumni member and supporter. Well, two weeks ago yesterday, he passed away in an accident while doing his evening chores. None of his corn or soybean fields had been harvested yet, but the seeds he had sown in the community over the years produced an abundant harvest of care, support, and friendship. So the neighbors all come in and says, I'll volunteer a day or half a day, whatever it takes to get the beans that are ready to go and the corn that's ready to go. We'll have six combines running. Tonight on News 3 at 10, we will share a very special Do Something Good story. See how the Sauk Prairie community has come together to show respect to a farmer and his family and help with Mike's final harvest. Again, that's tonight at 10. I look forward to that story, Charlotte and Gary. For farmers that finally got the dry weather to get some of that crop work done, we're right in middle of fall mm -hmm. mode right now. Yeah, you can't wait much longer, though. I mean, pretty soon, we're, November's just a couple of days away, and the temperatures will start getting even colder. But as we take a look at Doppler track, while there are a few sprinkles of rain out there, they're very light at this point. They're moving in areas north of Madison. They should diminish pretty quickly over the next hour or two as they head off to the east. And uh, then we're looking for quiet weather for much of the day tomorrow. There could be a couple of showers later in the afternoon. Live view from the Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam in Platteville showing the sun. Just just starting to dip below the horizon. The WISC sky cam also looking out toward the west, showing uh, the sky is clearing right on the western horizon. Edgewater sky cam downtown Madison showing a little more cloud cover looking back toward the south and east. High temperature today in Madison 51 after starting out at 40 this morning and right now we're at 48 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Winds are out of the south southeast at 7 miles per hour. Current temperatures range from the upper 30s in parts of northern Minnesota to still around 60 degrees out toward Des Moines, Iowa. We're in the 40s to around 50 through much of 
of southern Wisconsin. The jet stream is right in between, so there's colder air up to the north, milder air down to the south, but the jet stream coming in from the west or west-northwest bringing mainly Pacific air that gets dried out as it moves over the Rockies and uh, brings precipitation out there, and then by the time that, that uh, moisture or by the time those weather systems reach the Midwest, they don't have a lot of moisture with them. More of the moisture will stay down to the south with the subtropical jet stream through the southern part of the United States. And that'll be the trend at least for the next few days before the jet stream uh, pattern starts to change a little bit more. Right now, this little weather disturbance, actually with some slightly milder air, uh, most of that is on the other side of this uh, stationary front where temperatures are still in the upper 60s to around 70 degrees. On our side of the front, uh, it's not quite as mild, but still a little milder to our south and to our west. Our forecast for tonight calls for partly cloudy skies this evening, then turning mostly cloudy overnight, low temperature dropping to 42. Again, those showers north of Madison should be gone the next hour or so. 55 for the high tomorrow. It'll turn cloudy with a uh, possibility for a shower south and east of Madison late in the afternoon. Uh, future tracking to those showers moving on out. Skies turn cloudy overnight. Then tomorrow, watch as some showers develop mainly south and east of Madison. Areas north and west probably will miss out on the rain altogether. Tomorrow night will stay cloudy, then start clearing out toward early on Wednesday morning. And Halloween actually looks to be like a pretty nice day with high temperatures in the middle 50s and partly sunny skies. 7 to 10 day forecast calls for temperatures to start cooling down toward the end of the week. We'll be in the mid 40s by Friday and Saturday. Some rain and snow showers Saturday night into Sunday morning. Rain showers for the early part of next week and another shot of cool air at the end of the week. Well, it's the fumble heard around Wisconsin. What does Mike McCarthy have to say after this happened in yesterday's loss to the Rams? That story next in sports. Hi, I'm Michelle Carolla. Tonight on the news at nine ahead of the election, we're taking a closer look at the race for attorney general. That's first on Fox at nine.
Well, what an interesting 24 hours it has been for this Packers squad. I say interesting because we've got a lot to unpack here. First of all, after Ty Montgomery fumbled the ball on the punt return with 2.05 left in the fourth quarter, several reports stating that anonymous teammates said Montgomery was supposed to take a knee in the end zone but was unhappy about not playing in the previous series, so he threw what was described as a tantrum on the sidelines and then consequently ran the ball out of the end zone. So what does head coach Mike McCarthy have to say about all this? No one feels worse than the person that made a mistake. So, uh, and we've all been there. I mean, that's you don't you don't you don't achieve success in life, let alone the game of football, without without you know stumbling and, and you know doing things. Whatever the analysis or the opinion of what the, what you know what the mistake was. As far as you know the drama and the nonsense about it, um, I, I have nothing to say. But. If you want to know if it was emotional in the locker room, you're damn right it was. It was and it should have been. And I, and I want it to be because it's a reflection of how much these guys care. It's a reflection on how much they want to win. And it's clearly directly reflects we had, you know, every intention going out there to beat that team. Meanwhile, better days are ahead for the Badgers, the team turning the page after losing to Northwestern over the weekend. Wisconsin will host Rutgers this upcoming weekend, a team that has only won one game all season, has zero wins in the Big Ten. The Badgers have never lost to the Scarlet Knights before, and they're not about to start now. You don't want people hanging their heads and, and acting, oh, all this, is, all this is going wrong, season's over, anything like that. That, that mindset is, is, is poisonous. That's not what you want at all. Um, you never want to have that feeling of a season was a letdown or anything like that. So the fact that there's none of that is good. And, and I didn't expect anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're all mature. We know what's going on and, you know, we'll bounce back. Meanwhile, there are currently two perfect teams in the NBA right now, the 6-0 Toronto Raptors and the 6-0 Milwaukee Bucks. One of those teams will have one loss after tonight because, well, they play each other at the Pfizer Forum at 7 p.m. But no Giannis tonight. He's out undergoing concussion protocol after Saturday's game against the Magic. Now, he did pass neurological tests, according to team doctors, but had a lingering headache today along with some new symptoms. Kawhi Leonard won't play either for Toronto. The team says he is simply getting a rest day. So not exactly the star-studded matchup mm. that we were hoping mm -hmm. for, but we will see who will come out undefeated tonight. And this is their best record they've had in 50 Forever. years or something. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Gary, final check? Uh, temperatures right now are pretty comfortable. There are a couple of rain showers out there as well. You can see those on uh, Doppler track uh, right now in those temperatures, upper 40s uh, to around 50 degrees. By tomorrow morning, we'll be down to the lower 40s. 55 for a high tomorrow. Uh, could see a shower later in the afternoon, mainly south and east of Madison. Halloween Wednesday should be dry with highs in the mid-50s. A little cooler for the end of the week. Some rain showers, especially early next week, and then another shot of chilly earth toward the end of the week. That's pretty good for Halloween night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've I had some doozies through the years. Yeah. That's pretty good. Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10. Download the new Channel 3000 app and get alerted on your mobile device the minute news breaks. Wherever you go, be the first to know with Channel 3000.